Let's bring in Christy McSweeney, Managing Director of PR Council, and Roshina Campbell, Melbourne City Council. They both join me from Melbourne tonight. Thanks for joining me. I want to talk cost of living with you both, but I want to start rather unusually with a newspaper column today that was published in the, uh, the nine media newspapers. And as head of Dear Boomers, please do the country a favour and stop spending. And the author says, Dear Boomers, oh, there's, the, there's the headline, and they say, I know you've worked hard and earned your right to enjoy your retirement, but if you could hold off any major purchases for the next few months, we younger folk might be able to thank you for helping avoid further rate rises. Christy, is this, does she have a point or is this pointless sort of generational wars? I thought it was quite a cute column actually uh, very different to the heavy economic ones we read so boomers put off buying the Jayco till next year um, and my mum and dad if you're watching they know that I refer to our home in Perth as Boomer Castle uh, for the fact that all boomers in Western Australia who had the big quarter acre block have the five bedroom home with the pool and it is known as Boomer Castle um, something people my age could never ever ever uh, think that they could afford so I liked her satire she does have a point but, as they argue, we work really hard, we'll spend as we like, and you know what? They're spending it all on the grandkids anyway. Well, this is the point. I'll tell you what, I mean, obviously those people who are younger with their mortgages are the ones hardest hit by interest rate increases. That's true. But that was the same for my generation. I'm on the cusp of being a boomer. But the, the interesting thing, Rochelle, is... Uh, uh, Rowena, sorry, I, I'm wondering whether this spending that they want the boomers to stop, would that include the money that... Boomer parents are sending to their children the things they're buying them and the, the handouts and help along the way? Oh, she was pretty silent on that, wasn't she? All the help for first deposits and, you know, the help with the grandkids. She didn't mention any of that. But, I mean, what really struck me, and I, I say this as a millennial, I thought it was outrageous. You've got a generation that saved hard, that had some really high interest rates, that didn't have a lot of the daily indulgences that we have now, and now we're telling them when they're finally reaching a level of financial security and comfort, sorry, rein it in for us, I thought that was pretty outrageous. And, and let's be honest, what she was talking about is, you know, rein in your, your dining out and your spending. Well, what about all those small businesses that are yeah, struggling right yeah. now? How are they going to feel when mm -hmm. we've at least got one group who are able to support them and they're being told, no, cut that off as well. Sorry, shut your door because we're not going to spend any more. Yeah, I think this is clickbait, but it's certainly appealing to a certain demographic. Uh, Rashina has a point, doesn't she, Christy, that this is... It divides people, and it also... Uh, if you do stop spending, it's, it's the double-edged sword, isn't it? You're going to hurt a lot of small businesses. Well, don't blame it all on boomers. I mean, I grew up when I was working as a secretary and working in nightclubs and putting money away for my first home deposit. And I'm not quite a millennial showing my age here, but I'm definitely not a boomer. Uh, my friends were off taking two to three year gap years. Um, so I started young and put my money in the bank as my parents taught me. Um, so I didn't have to catch up later. So there are ways of doing things, but you're right. The grey nomad economy in this country is thriving. Uh, and Rasheen is absolutely correct. It supports a wealth of tourism, accommodation, food services industries around the country, particularly in rural and remote Western Australia. And a lot of it pays for the upkeep of our national parks too, all those JCOs setting up camps. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just find it bizarre, this presumption that uh, younger people, that the older people had it easy. Yeah, well... Uh, they just need to talk to some of those older people, I think. Roshina, uh, these cost of living pressures are very real, but they're also a political problem for the federal government especially. And now even big business has started to speak out. I think it was important in the last uh, 48 hours to hear from big business. They always love immigration, of course. It sort of helps to boost the bottom line. But they're saying we don't have the housing, we don't have the road infrastructure, we don't have the health and other support services. We've got to ease back. Yeah, and it is really important that we take a long, hard look at what is, quite frankly, a bit of a Ponzi scheme. We keep relying on immigration to make up for the fact that in this country we have huge skills shortages and we've got a declining birth rate. 
But the reality is we also have a huge problem with housing and we do not have the infrastructure we need to even meet the needs of our current population. In Victoria, we look at this big build that has blown out over time and over budget. Do we really want to see a state get further into debt to build the infrastructure we're going to need to meet the needs of these immigrants? And the real crisis facing our country is a productivity one. And building this infrastructure, building this housing to meet the demands of a growing immigrant population, that does nothing. What we really need right now is some political leaders who are happy to confront this productivity crisis head on and come up with the economic solutions to really get our economy going and thriving again. Yeah, and that's not more regulation of the industrial sector. That's not more government intervention. Most likely is getting government out of the way. Christy, this is uh, starting to bite with Labor. They're starting to say they're going to pull back on immigration. We might have seen our peak. But this is going to take a long while to wash through the system. Of course, the universities want to bring more and more foreign students in, and that's usually a way for people to end up staying here. But I, so I think politically as well as economically, this is going to be a real problem for Labor, who are really sliding in the polls at the moment. It's going to be a problem for them right up to election day if the coalition are strong enough to say it's time to ease back. Well, all politics is local and we saw Daniel Andrews perhaps win an election single-handedly uh, with uh, removing level crossings because Labor was able to say to people, removing a level crossing in your suburb is going to reduce your commute by eight minutes. Um, that's how they won the election. That's gone out the window now because nobody can get anywhere in Victoria within eight minutes. You can't even get round a city block within eight minutes uh, because, as you say, the big build, uh, which is running over time and over budget, to such a significant degree has congested uh, the city of Melbourne and people are now starting to see that as a real local issue. They are not buying the large esoteric messaging around we're building a better Victoria and we're building a better a city for you because they can't see it come to life. All they can see is I can't afford a house, I can't get anywhere in my car, I'm not productive at work because I'm spending so much time in the traffic, particularly if you're a tradie. Uh, and then they are seeing the Prime Minister off overseas several times a year, <laughs> not doing anything about how to get them from A to B in their own suburb. It <laughs> is starting to bite because it's becoming local. Sorry, I laugh. Uh, uh, you, you're dead right. But the idea of Prime Ministers being overseas, I think that really hurts ScoMo and it's really hurting Albo now. And pretty soon we're going to see all Prime Ministers staying home, doing everything by Zoom. Thanks so much for joining us, Rashina Campbell do. and Christy McSweeney. Really appreciate it.